Now I'd like to introduce our presenters. Today we got Chuck Roscoe, VP of Operations here at Cybra, and also Kevin Boger, Product Marketing Manager at, Cy at Sato. I'm excited to get this webinar started. So Chuck, Kevin, if you guys are ready, I'll pass it over to you. All right, let's take sure, it away. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, thank you, Phil. And let's let's make everyone work. You know, immediately that's on the webinar. We're going to put up a quick how about we put up a quick poll here, uh, Phil, just to kind of check the temperature of the attendees. There you go. As far as products, and I think you should all see that a quick poll pop up on your screen. If you don't mind, read through those, and you can click as many as you like. So, what products and service are you most interested in? And this is before the webinar, and. Uh, at the end, actually, Phil's going to have another quick poll for everyone to participate in. So, like thermal laser print or laser printing, you know, for either of those, printing consumables, which is actually something we're going to learn about from Sato that I wasn't aware of, how much they are involved in consumables being labels and ribbons and RFID tags and all that. Uh, printing software and, of course, services. Uh, and services can even be on-site services, you know, at your facility for hardware. It's another thing Sato does. Um, and of course, Smart Magic does the, or Cyber does the printing software. RFID encoding, so RFID tag, radio frequency identification. If you're interested in coding tags or the reading of tags or tracking of items, you know, if that's something that you're doing now or thinking about doing, check it off. And if you're uh, interested in joining any of our partner programs, you go ahead, feel free and, and, and check that off. So it's probably enough time. And let's get started with the agenda. So I'll just quickly, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about the partnership, uh, Kevin and I will, uh, about our product specifically within Cybra. I mean, we're mostly software, obviously, and then what Sato brings to the table and how we partner together. And we've been partners for a long time, a couple of decades, actually. Uh, a unique uh, s solution that we've worked on over the last few years with cannabis, something you know, something kind of new that maybe you weren't thinking of, um, that you maybe can use for your own company or your own customers. Uh, what, as I mentioned earlier, the consumables and how Sato handles that. Uh, a case study with actually an overseas account in Tori out in Japan. Uh, it's another one where it's kind of interesting how they implemented Mark Magic and Sato printers along with some other uh, software that you know, it's something to kind of to, to grow on and, and use maybe in, in your own business. And of course, unique features and functions, especially on the hardware side that Kevin's going to share with us with uh, some of the newer Sato printers out there. And we should have time at the end for questions and answers. So let's as Phil mentioned, please use that question uh, or chat option and oh, it's a question option and go ahead and type some questions to us and we'll get to those at the end. We're going to try to keep this to 45 minutes um, and let's see how we do. So let's go to the next slide here and uh, we can learn a little bit more about Sato and our partnership. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Chuck. Um, as Chuck mentioned, um, Sato and Cyber have has history with the partnership on both aspects of software and hardware. Um, Sato recognizes part that our partners and their abilities to bring these pieces together and to provide a total printing solution to their customers in the supply chain. While Sato provides the best in class hardware, and in our mind, Sato has the best in class software, and hopefully you will garner information about how our products can maximize enterprise printing throughout your network, as well as any new features that you may not be aware of. Our partnerships, again, are, are forged on those bullet points that you see on the slide. We're focused on customer process improvements, and I think you'll definitely see that um, demonstrated by Cyber's software, as well as how our hardware can be used to, again, maximize that throughput. Next slide. For most of the information that uh, we'll be providing in the presentation today, you can find on our website, uh, sotoamerica.com, or you can visit Cyber's website, cyber.com. Easy to navigate. You can actually download the Mark Magic software that's being uh, talked about today from our website. And again, that'll just link you back over to the Cyber's website to do such. Next slide. Cool. Thanks, Kevin. So a little bit about Cybra and, and who we are. So Cybra is predominantly a software development company, right? And we've been around for almost 40 years. 
Um, and our core products are Mark Magic, which has been around for heck 25 plus years. Oh my gosh, probably close to 30 years. I think when you think about it. And then there's also Edgefinity, which has been around for like 10 or 15 years. So Mark Magic, which we'll be talking about mostly, um, sports tons of printers, and our relationship with Sato really goes back 20 plus years um, where we developed a print driver or a Sato twin axe printer way back then, if you remember the I-Series or AS400 type of operating uh, of server, uh, that's where we kind of started off with Sato and then our partnership has grown over the years. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit more later on in more detail about Mark Magic and also Edgefinity be on the, on the edge side, we kind of get into RFID, not only just the encoding of the RFID tags, um, you know, with Sato printers, uh, but, we, but we also have software that can, can read those RFID tags. And like I said, I'll get a little bit more into that, but we have thousands of customers out there. I'm sure many of you already own or use Mark Magic or, or some of our Edge products, um, but I'm gonna get into a little bit more detail of some of the things you can do with our products and Sato throughout this webinar. So hopefully you'll stay engaged and, uh, and feel free to ask some questions along the way. So next one, Phil. And along those lines, uh, Sato America strives to be the most trusted auto ID solution provider worldwide. Uh, while we bring the hardware and consumables and working with our partners such as Cyber, the software solutions, we do offer that last inch in completing a total solution for the verticals that we target, such as manufacturing, logistics and retail, food and beverage, and healthcare. Um, again, Sato has been developing some amazing hardware solutions that hopefully will be demonstrated in today's presentation to show you how these can work within and work and enhance within your supply chain ERP and WMS verticals. Next slide. Next slide, Phil. Yeah, it actually came. I see the Sato product offerings. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, so, speaking of our products, we have several different product offerings based on your printing needs. From every facet of your organization, we offer industrial tabletops, desktops, mobile printers to equip your workforce to be able to print labels at point of application. Uh, not inclusive to this slide, but we also are the world's leading print and apply manufacturer with our print engines. We offer specialty printers such as the GY412, which will be demonstrated later in the presentation using the cyber software. that really provide unique printing solutions that you're not gonna be able to find in other vendors' inventory. Apart from our Heart, or excuse me, our Sato LP100 is our laser printer. And while we focus on the thermal printing for the majority of this uh, presentation, our laser printer is definitely well suited for printing large volumes of labels or tags. And when coupled with either our cutter stacker option, provides a robust printing solution that uh, not only cuts, but separates for distribution and application uh, in those distribution centers. And part of our last inch that we offer are both consumables and service. Uh, our consumables uh, that we offer are for laser, thermal, or RFID. We have um, field service technicians if you're looking for on site service, or you can opt for any of our factory depot warranties that will be sent back to Charlotte for repair with a guaranteed turnaround time of five days or less. Sato is proud to still offer free technical support for any of our users so that if you do encounter any issues, uh, feel free to call upon our tech support group to hopefully assist you and resolve those issues. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin. So, you know, before I talk about Cyber's, you know, main product here, Mark Magic. I will give you a little 
inside of our poll that we just took, just for the fun of it. I hate when people don't tell me the poll results, so I will. So we had those five <laughs> questions out there, and the top, actually, the top two were tied, almost, uh, almost 100% uh, for thermal printing and laser printing, and the other one, printing software and services. And then the next one was RFID encoding. Uh, that more than half the folks were interested in that, so that's that's good to know um, on on the RFID side to see that interest. Uh, so. Next few slides, I'm going to talk more about the Mark Mag our Mark Magic software, the label inform software from Cybra. So what you're watching on the screen, and don't get too mesmerized, it is fun to watch, is our JMagic designer interface. So JMagic, it comes, it's part of Mark Magic, but JMagic, you install it on a PC, and it's a WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get environment to design your labels or forms or collates or RFID tags. It's all in this interface. Same exact interface. You're looking at a four by six inch label. It could be eight and a half by 14 legal form. It could be anything. So it's really easy and intuitive. And there's tons of features in there, which we can certainly speak to you uh, directly uh, afterwards and give you a demo of everything. Um, but what else at a high level, what's, what's, What's cool about Mark Magic? So, one big thing is we support all types of printers. So, 450 different printer types, and that list is always growing. Uh, of course, all the saddle printers are supported, and you can look at that list and find it on our website. Um, and we're really, if you look at the first bullet there, the print engine inside. So, I always say, like, you know, Mark Magic is kind of the best kept secret. We have thousands of customers out there, I mean, tens of thousands of licenses out there, and a good chunk of these folks don't know they use Mark Magic, and that's because we've been integrated um, with other packages. So ERP and warehousing packages, a few of those companies are listed there, Manhattan Associates, there's Honeywell, Infor is one, where they've we are the print engine inside of their, I'll say, much larger software package. So they don't have to deal with the printing piece. They just, they have, they've integrated us with their package. So every time they go and print a label or form, Mark Magic happens to be doing that. Um, so we got tons of tons of those out there. Another big piece of Mark Magic is the number of platforms that we're supported on. So I mentioned earlier, we uh, you know our we, our first engagement with Sato was 25 some odd years ago uh, with a Twin X printer, which was on the AS400 or I series, or they call it the Power Nine now. And we still have Mark Magic um, that runs natively on that server, and we actually have a few thousand accounts still that do that, and they will continue to do that. It's not that's that platform's not going anywhere, and that's written in RPG, and Mark Magic runs natively right on that server. We also have Mark Magic PI, so it's another Mark Magic Edition PI, standing for Platform Independent. Uh, that's written 100% in Java. And that runs on all these other platforms. So Windows, Linux, you know, up in the cloud, AIX, and so on. Um, and one of the neat things is that this JMagic interface that you keep watching in a loop there, uh, moving fields around, connects to either of those products of, of those Mark Magics. So up on the AS400, it could be on a Linux server up in the cloud. It's the same JMagic interface. You just when you start up JMagic, you say, Hey, what's, where's my Mark Magic server? And you connect to it, and off you go, which is which is great. Um, as far as data uh, that we can that we can use, um, it runs the gamut. A lot of these companies have integrated it already, um, but we can certainly use physical files. We can use uh, database files. We can use spool files. We actually have an SQL feature where, uh, in the label itself, you can say, you know what, for the, when you print this particular label or form. Look, look up the vendor number in my SAP server over here. We actually connect to that server into your Oracle database and actually pull that data in dynamically at print time without any programming whatsoever. So that's a big deal within Mark Magic. And then of course that design interface, we also have a template feature where you can like scan in something and design right over top of it. Um, and it's really meant for enterprise printing. So we have thousands of printers can be attached to just one Mark Magic instance. And, and off you go. So talking a little bit more on the next slide about our add-on options within Mark Magic that some of you may not be aware of. So what I was just talking about there was just kind of what I consider base printing, which is a lot. It does a lot right there. But along with Mark Magic, when it gets installed, we actually install these six options as well, which can be activated by an authorization key uh, that, that we can provide uh, to you guys. So just Quickly, just kind of going over these, um, you know, the 2D barcode printing, we already, we all kind of get that, especially like those QR barcodes on a laser printer, we can do that. 
Uh, Form Weaver is a kind of neat one where if you have a requirement to print, I like to call them collates or e-commerce forms, which we're going to show you a little bit later on actually, but where you have a packing list or invoice section and you have a shipping label as part of this form, it may be on eight and a half by uh, like 14, you know, uh, paper that you're printing out and you have different sections on it. And another part, it may be a return label. For Form Weaver can actually mix and match those different formats uh, at print time. So you don't have to make a whole combination of these forms as one big form. You can just make the small ones and we'll actually build it uh, together uh, or for you at print time. And we can even bring in uh, PDF or images from other sources. Like we have accounts that are printing uh, some labels from FedEx or FedEx is providing them the PDF of a four by six inch label. Um, and we can actually import that in, bring that in and print it as part of the form we have reformed. So you can use that FedEx label along with a packing list. So I don't know, it sounded maybe a little complicated the way I just said it, but it's not. <laughs> um, we've been more than happy to show you that. Another option that we have is PDF and email and fax support. So basically anything that MarkMagic outputs, uh, like we're used to printing, right, to a thermal printer or a laser printer, you can tell MarkMagic, hey, you know what, create this as an Adobe PDF and put it and email it over here, email it to these six people or archive it over here or do both and, and all that. So everything's available. Uh, Mark mentioned that put as PDF. Print monitor is a, a neat feature where it, it really helps with with any coding or anything like that where you don't need to. So you can get up and running very quickly with Mark Magic, uh, where you can use print monitor to watch like an output queue or a folder, right? So you can have a folder on your PC when data, when certain data hits that, we can look for that and automatically call Mark Magic to print or PDF or, or fax the, the output in however the format looks. Um, so that's, and we also have a print queue capability for reprinting. That's all part of, that's actually part of regular Mark Magic, but Print Monitor does a good job with that as well. Of course, we do the RFID encoding, right? So we can encode those RFID tags, all the different GS1 standards uh, Mark Magic supports. And the final one is Print Transformer, which is a rules based printing uh, and conditional printing. What we're showing here uh, is just one of the one of the things that can be done is you have a Mark Magic format on the left, and at print time it can look like the format on the right dynamically based off the data being sent uh, form by form. So if the customer was Cybra, print that data as an invoice and have it look like on the left. If it's a different customer, you know what? totally changed the way it looks. So this one has 12 different areas where it has changed and it's dynamic. So the big deal with Print Transformer is you can have just one label format or one form. And if a customer contacts you, like for your packing list, let's say, hey, when you ship us products, I want you to use our logo on it. And I want this barcode over here. And I want some other lines on it and change the font from this font to that font. So typically you would have to go and make a brand new format for this customer. It's like, okay, you got these special requirements, so I'm gonna make another special packing list, packing list number two, right? And then you gotta change your programs too, right? To say, hey, when it's this customer, it's her packing list, make sure you use this format instead of our, our standard one. You don't have to do any of that with Print Transformer. You just keep printing the same exact packing list you always have, and it can look completely different customer by customer by customer by using our conditional formatting where you basically make the fields smart and they change on the fly based off the data. So again, we can show you a lot more on that, uh, but the, for the sake of time, let's move on to the next slide, <laughs> um, which is something I just wanted to share with folks because sometimes um, you may find yourself in a situation where you know what, I have some legacy labels, label printing or forms printing, and I would love to kind of upgrade that to maybe a package like Mark Magic. I mean, I'd hope you'd say that. Um, but like, you don't want to create these labels or forms from scratch. So I'll just pick on ZPL for just a moment. Where, yeah, so on the left is a ZPL print file, right? That maybe somebody hard coded for you guys 10, 15, 20 years ago, and you've been printing that label, and, that, and that's all great. But you know, you're moving on, you want to make changes to that format, you don't know how to do that. Cyber actually has a tool that was shown up there before called the Print Stream Importer, we call it PSI, where you can actually send us your ZPL text file like on the left, and in less than five seconds, we will bring that in to MarkMagic, and we actually kind of reverse engineer it right into a MarkMagic or JMagic format. So here on the right, you're looking at that actual label. So now, once it's in JMagic, 
and Mark Magic, you can drag things around and make changes and save it and do whatever you want. So it frees you up and we will do that for you. So feel free to contact us if you're in that situation. Um, we'd be happy to, to, to up, up level a number of your labels. Uh, and then once it's in Mark Magic, like in this example, it can be copied over to those any of those 450 50 printer types. So you can go from this Zebra one here and again, it's a matter of seconds. Say, so you know what, copy it over to the Sato uh, print driver and we will automatically convert any, any of the fonts around, any barcode densities and all that stuff. And also now you have a native Sato format uh, that with the native Sato code, it'll optimize everything on the printer. Now Sato has other ways to handle this too, where they have emulators that well, Kevin will talk about where you can send ZPL to it, but you have lots of options here. And just keep in mind, just getting from the hard-coded print files into an actual package can be super fast and super easy. Um, just, just contact us. So jump into RFID for just a moment. Um, our Edge Magic, or it's really our Edge Finity product line's been around for 10, 15 years now. And this has to do with it's kind of I like to think of it as the opposite of Mark Magic. You know, Mark Magic does the printing and encoding of RFID tags. Edge Finity does the reading of them. And, and it can read in all kinds of areas like storefronts and back rooms with handheld readers and fixed readers. And all we're kind of showing here is we have a number of actually larger retail retail brand owners that have they've been using uh, edge magic for years to actually validate uh cartons as they're coming from their different suppliers so uh, so their supplier maybe overseas in indonesia or wherever when they're creating or manufacturing the shirts like for phillips van Heusen, they also put rfid tags on there so those price labels those upc labels are also rfid tag so when uh, PVH receives these uh, cartons in North Carolina, they put them on their conveyor, they run them through this cage and Edgefinity actually reads the barcode right before it goes in the cage, looks up the carton number and says, all right, should have these 24 shirts in there. This, then the carton goes in that cage, which, which is a picture there as it's just kind of, it's going like 300 feet per minute. And in 300 milliseconds, it turns on an RFID reader, which has four antennas attached to it. We read everything inside that carton we validate all 24 shirts are in there and, and it just kind of, it just keeps on going. I mean, the carton never even stops. If there's something missing or something extra, we send an alert and then it gets diverted further down and it goes through a different uh, area within their facility. But that's just one of the many, many, many things that Edgefinity can handle. So, and we're seeing more and more of this now. Granted, COVID has slowed us down a little bit. <laughs> uh, we saw a really uptick. I mean, for us, a real big uptick in, in RFID uh, activity um, earlier this year, it slowed down a tiny bit, but we expect that to pick up again. So, and the price of these RFID tags have come down a bunch um, as well. So it's it's something to think about uh, and talk to us about. Uh, we'd be more than happy to share our knowledge of RFID in in general and and obviously specifically for your use case to let you know if it's uh, if something that'll work out or not. So I will stop talking for a few minutes and turn it over to Kevin. <laughs> All right. Well, that's um. Some very cool features that you demonstrated there, Chuck. Um, absolutely. So much like what Cyber's done with the software, um, as Chuck has mentioned, we have kind of built in the smarts within our um, most of our product models, including our CL4 and X Plus, to have emulation capabilities. So from an integration standpoint, uh, if you didn't have the software package such as Bart Magic that does have all the bells and whistles to be able to import in those existing data streams and such and convert them over to a native printer language, no worries. On the Sato products, we actually have built-in emulations and on the CL4 and X Plus, it's actually auto-switching emulations. So we can switch from ZPL to DPL to IPL to TCL and even EPL just based on the input of the data stream coming to the printer. So again, minimal integration, it's truly, in most cases, a stop, drop, and replace type of component. So you get uh, the full feature aspect of our robust emulation capability to replace any of those legacy incumbent uh, printer manufacturer compared to printer manufacturers, as well as all the benefits of the CL4 and X Plus. Maximized throughput, it's all about speed. And for the CL4 and X Plus, we can actually go up to 14 inches per second. We can warehouse up to a 10 inch OD of media, as well as 
a 600 meter ribbon, which means fewer operator interventions. And again, more throughput for that print station. We uh, definitely support RFID. And as Chuck also referenced, there has been an uptick in the RFID or the maturity of the RFID environment. So more folks are starting to embrace, um, it's not cost prohibitive for them to embrace the key aspects of wireless data collection using RFID. And SOTO is really at the pinnacle of RFID support uh, for a majority of, of course, the standard inlays. But as we know, there's new inlays that are being adopted or drafted and introduced into the market space that may not be supported in all aspects of other printer models. Well, no worry on the SOTO front because we actually have a pr pr proprietary method of actually analyzing the RFID inlays to set all the appropriate power settings for read write as well as placement of the inlay. So again, you don't have to rely on the configuration guide or wait months in order for it to be validated. Uh, those capabilities are going to be introduced into the CL 4 x uh, plus printer. So again, ease of operation, ease of integration, and if you are going from traditional barcoding type of labeling, CL 4 x is RFID ready. And with the RFID capabilities of CL 4 x coupled with the capability of the Cybra Mark Magic or JMagic software platform, you have a total now RFID printing solution. Hey, Kevin, I just got a, a question on, on the RFID, like how it configures itself, how the printer configures itself for the RFID tag stock, because that is that is an issue. That can be a pain, like with other printers that I that I've dealt with over the years. I mean, how does that work? Is Absolutely. that like, so? Put in different RFID stock. Is it a front panel type thing? I just hit and I say, you know, configure, or how does it? How does it then go and test it well, and, at, in the right settings? Good question, Chuck. And I'm actually mm -hmm. probably speaking a little bit out of turn, but those that are actually mm -hmm. joining us on the webinar, you're kind mm -hmm. of getting a little bit more information that I would have normally shared elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't been developed or implemented yet on the CL4 and X Plus. It currently resides on our CT4LX which I'll oh, talk okay. about later on in the presentation. But it's still a valid question. Um, so I'll wait to that particular slide, Chuck, if you don't mind, and I'll give okay. you a little bit more details on that aspect. But definitely a good question. All right, fair enough. Let me talk about cannabis then. Is that all right? You mind? Sure. Cannabis? <laughs> um, so cannabis or marijuana. Uh, so this is something that it's just a unique kind of solution that Cyber has worked on, uh, and it's not even really new anymore, right? I mean, cannabis, cannabis has been, uh, you know, kind of mainstream for a few few years now with different states and everything. But one of the things that came with, you know, cannabis growing and, and selling and the different oils and all that is we saw a, a lot of business on the RFID side. So they want to be able to track, and some of this is government mandated, uh, from kind of seed to sale. So that mother plant, and then as it goes into, uh, it's broken into different clones and then to plant trays and so on. Uh, Cyber actually has a solution. So part of our edge solution uh, can handle all that, can handle the tracking and the uh, and the parent-child you know, relationship. Um, and what was kind of neat when I was speaking with Sato on the cannabis side, so all the, you know, it's almost like its own you know, solution really, you know, you know, as far as the tracking and putting them in the vault and taking things out and send them to a dispensary, Edgefinity can handle all that. But on the RFID tag side, one of the things you'll find with RFID is like it's really, uh, it, 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 the environment plays a big role in how your readability, you know, if you're gonna be able to read things or not. Like if there's a lot of metal around, right? Some RFID, a lot of RFID tags don't like that. Um, some do, right? So, um, and that's things that we've learned a lot over the years and Sato certainly knows all about. So I was interested to learn, because I didn't know this right away, is that Sato it, as part of, and they have all kinds of form factors for their RFID stock. They actually have some uh, called pot stakes, which the there's an image there now. There's actually an RFID chip inside of those stakes, um, which work great, uh, especially when it comes to, to plants, not just cannabis, but because uh, there's a fair amount of moisture involved, and you know, and RFID does not really like liquids. Um, so the fact that they made that 
you know, in, enclosed in, in the plastic as they did, uh, it allows it to be read, and that's really a neat solution. So there's a lot of niche solutions like to, like that that Sado has on the consumable side, which I think, Kevin, you're going to tell us a little bit more, more about your consumables. That's correct, Chuck, and thank you for pointing out the, the fact of our RFID capabilities. Uh, with Sado consumables, uh, we are kind of the industry expertise uh, when it comes to pressure sensitive labels. Uh, but as Chuck mentioned, he wasn't even aware that we actually produce those labels in house, either in our Charlotte office a location, our Romeoville location, and for our horticulture division, our Daytona location. And you kind of see here on the slide, we uh, have a full plethora of different uh, media types that we are able to convert, like I mentioned, the pressure sensitive labels, whether it's blank white or even colored labels. Uh, with the horticulture labels, we have the tree wraps, the pot stakes, and um, actually other hort material that's not shown here. And then for our laser printing, uh, we offer shelf edge labels, hang tags, or multi-part forms. And again, all those are produced here in the U.S. Next slide. Awesome. So this next, the next actually few slides, we're just going to get into some what we think of kind of some neat uh, combinations between our two companies, besides it's a general partnership, but uh, some specific printers that Sato has and the solution that that Cyber brings to the table on the Mark Magic side. So the first one is kind of highlights this printer called the GY412, and it's like super cool because like you don't see this out there and it's this has been around for heck eight ten years now and mark magic has supported it and it really what it boils down to we're all used to a thermal printer right just front it just prints uh, their four by six inch label and off you go the gy412 is actually a duplex thermal printer so it doesn't suck it back in or anything like that and then turn it around it's actually it, the label just comes out and they have print heads on the top and the bottom uh, and mark magic supports this duplex feature obviously and out they come. So what's neat is you can have a printing, uh, uh, excuse me, a shipping label on the front, and then we have a number of council use a packing list or maybe a return label on the back. And they can, this, if you look all the way to the right, that there's special stock you can buy that you can go ahead and stick this on the box. And then when your customer gets it, they can tear off the back or they could tear off the label and then see what's on the back like their packing list. So a great use case for this that we've seen a bunch of times our customers who are currently printing shipping labels on a thermal printer or wherever they're printing them, and then a packing list on a totally different printer, a laser printer, right? And then you got a couple things that can that can happen, right? There are a couple issues that can pop up. Number one, like what if they get mismatched, right? So you got to make sure you bring the label and the form over to the right carton. And a lot of times, either you're putting that the extra work putting that uh, that packing list in the carton itself, or you're getting one of those little plastic or yeah, those little plastic baggies that say packing list inside, and you're tearing that off, and you're folding up your packing list, stuffing it in there, putting it on the box. So there's a lot of you know extra labor involved. This is like a one printer does it all situation where you can have that whole packing list already printed on the label. So you just print out the label, you stick it on the box, and you're done. So we actually have a short video we can just show you the the label kind of coming out. And if you look at the front and back, so there's the printer, there's the front side of the label, like the shipping label. This one happens to have a packing list on the back. And if you see that little green tear off part on the label, that's where the customer kind of tears it off and they can flip over and see their packing list. So again, it's a real time saver. And I think uh, Kevin, you're gonna tell us a little bit more specifically about the printer. Correct, Chuck, but I think your, your video is worth a thousand words. Um, Simply put, it is a two-sided thermal printer. As Chuck mentioned, the, the fact that it can duplex both front and back simultaneously uh, is definitely a huge uh, throughput or labor savings. And the fact that you don't, if you are replacing the standard pick slip and the pack list um, with the shipping label, you can, again, get process improvement simply by eliminating that particular task and marrying that information onto the label. Mark Magic, J Magic does a fantastic job of doing that uh, function. And again, it doesn't necessarily have to be just a pick list. It could be any type of other marketing or advertising that you wish to use, whether it's coupon uh, incentive for them to 
revisit you, or in the case of another vendor that's uh, utilized a particular printer installation, they used it for return labels. So they would remove the ship to label, and for the item they're returning back, they would just reapply the flip side to that package to be shipped back to that vendor. So again, it makes things very clean and easy and even environmentally safe because you're no longer having the waste of a traditional label and then again the expense of additional printers. Yeah, so it's a real time saver. So if you're in that situation, it's like a, the perfect solution. It's, it's really neat. Laser printers. Absolutely. So yeah, so that's on the thermal side. So we're, we're kind of, you know, a neat printer. Here's one on the on the laser printing side. So Sato has this LP100R, which in my world is like a wicked fast printer. It goes, it's like 46 feet per minute. Uh, I know there's other ones out there that go even fast, and we have customers that, that print like you know, tons of these forms. Um, so Kevin's going to tell you a little bit more about the printer specifically in a moment, but as far as Mark Magic is concerned, a lot of customers think of us as a oh the oh the label printing software you know and then we actually have a whole other half of our customer base that think of us as the forms printing software and we actually do both you know it's a whole that whole part of being the best kept secret so some of these forms that are coming up now these are all mark magic generated and they are supported on a laser printers like this lp 100 r um so and they can be eight and a half by 11 eight and a half by 14 they can be any any size you like and as far as the printer language support, so in the Mark Magic world, we call it PCL5 or HP PCL5 or HP PCL 5C, um, which the Sato printer supports and a lot of laser printers support. Uh, the other thing unique about this printer is it has all these other emulations like PGL and VGL or IPDS or also known as AFP, which Mark Magic supports those as well, which I didn't know about until I were kind of getting ready for this webinar. So I thought that was interesting. So if you have the need to print any of these types of forms, and we're not just limited to like Wayfair and Amazon, and we have Groupon, we have hundreds of pre-created forms that we've already made templates for here at Cyber available at, at no cost. And we have customers that use us for check printing too. It could be invoices, it could be statements and so on. So a lot of use cases for check printing and Mark Magic can handle all of it, pulling the data from different uh, different data types, as I mentioned earlier. So a little bit more on this specific printer, fire away. All right, D thank you, Chuck. And uh, definitely very nice to see that Mark Magic does have all that capability that uh, does play into the LP100. You know, the LP100 is a wide web uh, printer. As Chuck also mentioned, it's just blazing fast. Uh, 100 pages per minute, 46 feet you know, per minute. Uh, it's just super, super fast. So for form printing, definitely um, you gain the throughput when you migrate up to or step up to the laser printing aspects of that product. I had mentioned the fact that it's really designed for forms printing, but it can support or, or print on shelf edge labels, hang tags, and is used for variable data printing. So again, you can have a pre-printed form or tag, and again, we can just fill in the blanks and running at those high speeds at very high resolution of 600 DPI. And for throughput, it's all about, again, operator intervention. And so by not uh, by minimizing the downtime of having to replenish consumables, this can be done while the printer is in operation. And so if you have to add more toner to it, it doesn't require you to have additional downtime or anything of that nature where, again, it's going to impact or impede your throughput. And the reality is, you know, a lot of people go, well, there, there's a, it's cost prohibitive. But if you think about the labor savings that you gain in using the LP100, it can easily replace a handful or a half a dozen thermal printers and allow those other operators to attend to other aspects of their job functions. So perfect for in-house printing or distribution centers and then have them go out via the supply chain to your vendors. So definitely a huge labor savings when it comes to the LP100R. Next slide. Yeah, so uh, we wanted to share just one of, I mean, we have tons of these like 
little case studies, but we thought this was interesting. Uh, a company by the name of Notori, they're kind of like the IKEA, maybe they wouldn't appreciate me saying that, but that's what that's the way I see them, the, the IKEA of Japan. So they have hundreds of stores, hundreds of uh, distribution centers too. I mean, they're a little bit smaller, but they're all they're all scattered throughout the island. And they came to uh, to to Cyber uh, three or four years ago, um, and we're asking about you know Mark Magic and the use of Sato printers. They also and this also teams up with another uh, partner of ours, of both of ours, Sato and Cyber. We're partners with Manhattan Associates, which has their big Momentum conference uh, you know online coming up. Uh, we're partners with them, and Notori uses one of their packages called WMOS, which which has Mark Magic PI, that platform independent version, kind of running under the covers. Um, and again, they wanted to use Saddle printers. Uh, they we said, yeah, that's great. We support all the Saddle printers. And if you look on the left hand side, we've got the Saddle that little that PW printer, uh, which is a really cool little mobile printer. You can wear on your belt. It's all battery driven, all the way up to a six inch wide printer um, throughout their different facilities for retail and also for distribution and, and all that. Um, and it was really nice for their uh, former president, their cause, uh, to say some nice, th nice things about Cyber and, and the integration with with our product as well as as Manhattan Associates. So uh, Kevin's going to tell us a little bit about some of those actual printers. I mean, which are really neat um, and, the, uh, and the features they bring to the table. Absolutely, and thanks again, Chuck. I mean, the, the Tory story, as, as Chuck referenced, did bring in a couple of models that I'm getting ready to speak about. But I'm just going to kind of hit the highlights. Uh, in regards to some of the features. And Chuck, I know when we were talking about RFID, you were asking about the RFID Analyze. Mm -hmm. well, like I said, that feature actually does reside on the CT4LX at this point in time. It's scheduled for summer release, possibly, um, in the summer for the CL4 and X. Okay. But uh, that's definitely a very unique feature within the SOTO product lineup and offering uh, the SOTO RF analyze capability, where as I mentioned, it's able to go out there and regardless of the inlay type, it will analyze the inlay for the appropriate power settings for both read and write, as well as the position of the inlay. Now, ultimately, the configuration guide should still be your first reference, but if you do run across those occasions where, again, the new RF chip is being introduced into the market space and hasn't yet been qualified, this is definitely a huge leap in giving that capability to be able to, sorry, my headpiece dropped off. <laughs> the, uh, give you the capability to um, easily set up the printer. And speaking of setting up the printer, it has a 4.3 inch color display, that screen, same menu navigations that you'll find across our product platform going forward. So, once you learn the menu structure on one printer, it carries over to the next auto printer and the next and the next. So very intuitive, easy to set up, um, fast throughput with the uh, CT4LX, as well as onboard competitive emulations, again, making it a, a right candidate if you are replacing competitive printer models. Just easily drop it in and we speak your language. You can plug it in, send the data to the printer, and we will image it out without any issue. The same is true for our mobile printer, PW2NX. And again, it's all about efficiency. So printing at the point of application where you actually need to print the label, the PW2NX is a very durable printer model. Uh, it actually has a, over an eight foot drop specification. So it's able to survive. Those are accidental drops. Um, but a large media capacity, which is easy to load. It's just one single button to open up the cover, drop in the labels, pull the label out, close the cover, and you're up and running with minimal hassle. It also supports the widest print area, 2.16, so there are some times where maybe you're not able to maximize your real estate of your label, and again, the PW2NX is the largest print area that you'll find in a mobile printer of that size. Support all the native emulation languages, just as I mentioned for all the other SOTO products, uh, as well as it can be uh, set up and supported through SOTO online services or with the SOTI Connect platform for enterprise management. All right, next slide. 
that's the the end of that presentation. But I also just wanted to give a shameless plug real quick before we jump into Q and A in our last poll for mm -hmm. CyberCon, which is next week starting at 11 on Tuesday, May 5th. Uh, it's going to be a live virtual event and the focus is providing information on how brands can quickly ramp up their supply chain for the new normal. So we have lots of thought leaders who will be conducting talks throughout the day and that includes our very own Chuck and Kevin on the line right now. So uh, of course it's gonna be conducted online. So if you're interested, please join us. Um, for more information and also to register, you can go to cyber.com slash cybercon. Uh, so lastly, we have uh, one more poll. And if we have any questions, if we have any questions you guys want to go over, just shoot uh, for Q&A. Okay. But I'll launch the poll right now. Okay. Yeah, launch that. I, I do see a couple questions, so we'll, we'll sure. jump into those after the poll. So first, the poll. Cool. There you go. Yeah. What are you asking us here? Would you like a rep? Oh, do you want us to contact you? There you go. We're not going to, we won't bite. We won't hurt. We're not going <laughs> to hassle you. <laughs> but this is, hey, this is just, yeah, this way we can, we can pass it on to the appropriate representative. You know, if you're interested in the software, hardware, consumables, you know, that would be uh, obviously Sato uh, services. So, you know, cyber offers, offers some services as far as label and form design, and we'll even do that whole importing of like the older printer code stuff, right? Bring it into Mark Magic. And of course, Sato has lots of services where they're on site and, and doing maintenance and, and all and setup and all that. And back to, oh, we asked this earlier, we'll ask it again, which only had 33% last time say, join the partner program. And I'm watching it dynamically, we're up to half, a half, so 50%. Phil, we want some people over. They want to join our program. Very good. <laughs> yeah. So some of the, can we, we're probably good there. Uh, I see a few questions, which we have a little bit of time. Um, let's jump into these. So first one is from Dale I think it's Schaefer. Sorry, you know what? I won't do last names. Dale, he's asking if Mark Magic supports label applicators. So yes, so label applicators are, um, Usually you see them like on a conveyor line, like they're like as the boxes are coming down, uh, they're really cool like machines where they have a, a big print engine on there and they have these actuators and all that stuff. And it basically as the, as the carton's going through, it actually prints and sticks the label on the box. And Mark Magic is, I mean, we optimize speed and performance for Mark Magic and again the native printer code and all that. And we have tons of customers using Mark Magic and super fast conveyor type environments. Uh, for label applicators and Sato does label applicators, right? Or they, you guys play a role in that, right, Kevin? Yeah, absolutely, Chuck, and, and good point. I mean, even though it wasn't brought up during the actual presentation, Sato, first and foremost, has probably the, the is the world's leader in print print engines throughout the world. Really? I didn't. So know. We, I actually didn't know that. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Well, that yeah, so that that's good to know. But I mean, you know, as, as you mentioned. Um, Mark Magic definitely supports the Sato print engines, and with our S84 EX, you actually have print speeds up to 16 inches per second. So I mean, that's just blazing fast mm -hmm. on a production line. Um, so yeah, to take full advantage of the capability of our hardware, definitely meld it with the capability of the cyber software. You've got a winning combination. Awesome. So I saw another question, actually one just came in from Ron. Uh, I'll jump on this one before the next one. Is Mark Magic licensed by printer or how would one quote this? So Mark Magic, uh, that's a great question. Uh, it's actually licensed by server. So, um, you know, like in, going old school, which still is an old school. There's a lot of these AS400s out there still. It's by AS400 or by partition or by like serial number basically. Uh, on the Mark Magic PI side, which is kind of a you know the, the newer way, even though it's we've been doing it for 10 or 15 years, and that's like if you're running on a Windows box or Linux or AX up in the cloud and all that, Mark Magic PI it's licensed the same way, and we basically use the MAC address, so it's the MAC address of that particular server. That's what we we make the license key against, and we are unlimited number of users, unlimited number of printers, unlimited number of labels, and all everything is unlimited. So um, that's that, and then you asked about converting files from. Oh, okay. So uh, some some uh, some PC based labeling package. You asked if we can convert those, and my my answer is yes. In that, if you can just output their print 
to regular printer code like the ZPL or the DPL uh, or the MPCL, that's like Monarch or now it's Avery printer code, that actual language and send us that text file, we'll switch that right in there again, a few seconds each. Um, so we can do that for you, no problem at all. Um, let's see, I got one more question and maybe we'll wrap things up. I see Gina. She's asking, this is for you, Kevin, where does Sato manufacture their labels? Well, good question. Uh, Sato being a global company, we actually manufacture labels across the globe in 47 different countries. But here in the U.S., we do have three manufacturing facilities. As I mentioned, one here in Charlotte, another one in Romeoville, which produces our laser and thermal print. Uh, and then in Daytona, we basically produce our horticulture consumables. Oh, okay. So, it, Charlotte, Daytona, and Romeoville. Nice. So the pot steaks, are they down in Daytona? Daytona, correct. Yeah. Okay. Good. Nice spring break down there. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the top of the year, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Well, let's... Uh... Yeah. As I say, I'm going to wrap things up. If that's all right, we'll give everybody a few minutes of their afternoon back. And again, I, I, this is again, Chuck with Cybra. I appreciate everybody's taking the time and you know and and sitting down with us today. Hopefully, you learned some new things. And as I mentioned earlier, do not hesitate to contact either of us. So, like, there's an email address up here for Cybra help at cyber.com. There's also sales at cyber.com. We have tons of people monitoring those, so you can ask any question you like. Sato has a similar email account or you can call them, or you can call us. Do not hesitate. So thanks again. Uh, Kevin, any closing remarks? I want to thank everyone for their time this afternoon. Hopefully you found the presentation informational and useful. Um, hopefully some key takeaways and things that you may not have known about either products. So Chuck, thank you for sharing some very useful information for myself. I've learned a lot over the past couple webinars. And uh, yeah, so same here. Definitely. Yeah. Great, thank you.